Right guys, hello and have a day for you all. More content on Plex. We're going to talk about collections to have our movies and TV shows well organised and looking rather splendid. Now there's quite a lot for me to talk about. We'll break the video down into chapters. I'll do that through timestamps in the description of the video and a pinned comment below, along with useful links for you to click on to help you along. I think where we'll start is with what Plex calls the automatic collections. So you can think of it as it creating box sets from the content that you have in your libraries. So I've got my library view here, but I've also got this collections tab, which shows the box sets. So as an example, if I wanted to binge watch the Blade movies back to back, I can come to the Blade collection, press play, starts with Blade, that finishes, starts Blade 2, that finishes, goes straight into playing Blade Trinity. Very cool. I don't have to get up and change discs from a Blu-ray box set. This is what's magical about doing things digitally. Maybe you don't want to watch things back to back, but you just want to see what's part of the Blade collection, see the films individually, who stars in them, etc. But how do we create these collections? We're going to go to the top where our spanner icon is for settings and click on that. Some people do run more than one Plex media server. So over to the left, let's just make sure we have selected the server that we want to edit. And we go down to manage our libraries. Now you can see I have 12 libraries and some of you might be panicking, thinking you've done something wrong. You've only got three. You've got one for movies, one for TV shows and one for music. You haven't done anything wrong. It's just a personal preference. I made things a bit more complicated and convoluted for a reason. And that's that I share my... Uh, collections with family and I want to control what they can or can't see so for an example my mum's in her 70s I don't want her to see the 3d films not because I'm mean but because her tv doesn't support 3d content if I give her access to those libraries she'll play something by mistake she'll get a side-by-side -side image and then ring me up telling me her tv's broken I need to come and look at it so very easy for me to avoid that situation by not giving our access to the 3D Films library. Now you know. So what we need to do for our libraries is go to Edit Library, go to Advanced, and we scroll down, and we're looking for minimum automatic collection size. From the drop-down menu, we don't want disabled, we don't want one, we're going to set it to two. So as long as we have two films in the box set, it will create the collection for us. Don't do one for some reason there's some films that shouldn't be part of a box set. They're just a standalone film. And then it will make a collection for them. It was really, really weird. And I had to go manually deleting them. It was a pain in the ass. So just set it to two as the minimum. As we scroll down, we have collections. And from this drop down menu, we're going to hide collections, but show their items. Select that, save the changes. Now I've got all these extra libraries that I need to do exactly the same thing for. Edit the library options for. But we've also got the TV show, so we'll edit that library as well. Go to Advanced. Now, there will be no minimum automatic collection size because they don't do automatic collections for TV shows. But we can create them manually. So we will go back to Collections and do that High Collections, but show their items from the drop down. Save those changes. Why are we doing that, though? Why is that such an important setting to choose? It's all about how things are going to be presented to us. So as I go to my films library, this is basically my 1080p content. And you can see there's over 2,000 films, 2,000 uh, thumbnails to scroll through. That's quite a lot. We don't need it any more complicated than it needs to be by showing the collections in here as well, the box sets alongside them. The whole point is that the library view is the individual films, each one of them. And then we have the collections tab to show the box sets. And then when we click on the box sets, the films show inside them makes things much easier to navigate and look much, much tidier. So there you go. So another thing we can do is what's called Spark Collections. So we choose our library, we come into the library view, and in the top right, we've got this plus with the lines, the add to icon. We can click on that and create a Smart Collection. This is quite a powerful tool and you can do quite a few things. So you might want to create a collection based off of studio like Disney or Pixar or whoever. You could do it off a director like Quentin Tarantino, maybe your favorite actor. There's lots of different options to choose from. So we could do actor is 
off the top of my head, I know I have a lot of Sandra Bullock films. So we could do Sandra Bullock. And lo and behold, there's all of the films. So we could save that as Sandra Bullock films and create. And that will make the collection for us. I don't tend to use this too much. It can be a little bit buggy about having things come down in the drop down menu. But at least you're aware of it. You can experiment with it. Um, you're aware of the options. What I will do is show you how to create things manually. That's how I like to do it. We're going to do it in the TV show library, but it's exactly the same method to create it in your movie libraries as well. So as we come into TV shows, we can see I've got my box sets over here. So yeah, for Star Wars and Stargate, because they don't always necessarily share the same name, although they're part of the same world, the same universe. So to do an example, Yellowstone's just finished. But some people might not realize that 1883 and 1923, they're the prequels. So we'll go to 1883. There's a little pen icon in the bottom left to edit. We'll go to labels, uh, sorry, tags. And in the collections, we'll do Yellowstone collection. And I'll click add Yellowstone collection and save the changes. Next one is 1923. And we'll go to tags, collections. And as I start to type yellow, it's already given me the suggestion. And we can save the changes. And of course, there is Yellowstone itself. So exactly the same thing again. Into tags, as I start to type Yellowstone, gives me the suggestion. We can save the changes. As we move to the collections view, now we've got Yellowstone. I can click on it. So we've got the pen icon there to edit. We've got a general summary so it's not going to pull one automatically online we have to type it out so we can just put whatever you want following the Dutton family through the generations as they build up the Yellowstone Ranch whatever you want to do whatever you want to type we've got the poster view as well what it's done is just take the box art from all of those series and put them into one image which doesn't look particularly fancy there could be other collections we're trying to create, say Star Wars or Star Trek that are better populated, but it's basically nothing here. So what we're going to do, I'll give you the link to the poster DB, the posterdatabase.com. You can create a free account here. There'll be other websites that do a similar thing. All we're basically trying to do is get some fancy custom artwork. So I'm searching for Yellowstone. We'll go to collections. There's Yellowstone. Pick whatever you like the look of. So I'll click on this one here. I don't need to download the poster. All I need to do is get its link. So we'll copy, paste the link, click on the green, head back to Plex and where it says enter a URL. So in here you can right click and paste or I'm going to do control and V together, keyboard shortcut, press enter. Yellowstone collection has been selected. You can save the changes. So there we go. So the other thing we can do, it says free programs, but we could arrange them in chronological order of the story. So at the top is the free lines. That's going to let me grab onto Yellowstone. And I'm going to drag that to the end because that's set in present day. So it goes 1883, 1923, Yellowstone. I'm happy with that. I haven't put the blurb in, but yeah, whatever. I can do that a little bit later. So as we go back, so another question that people ask is, can you have things in different libraries all be added to the same collection? No, but you can in a roundabout way. So if we look in my Star Wars television collection, we see we've got four programs there, but it's also showing me the Star Wars movies as well. So that's because the Star Wars TV shows have been put into a collection called Star Wars Collection which happens to be the same name for the collection I've used in the 4K film library. So if I head to 4K films, into its collections, and we find Star Wars, it's showing me 11 films, but at the bottom, TV shows. They're named the same, so Plex knows they're related to suggest them in this view. So in a roundabout way, we've put things in different libraries into the same collection. Hopefully that helps you out. So yes, you can create them manually from the library view, 
lots of reasons you might want to do this. So for Star Wars, there's something called the Despecialized Edition, where it's as it was when it was released back in like the 70s, before George Lucas went back and started tinkering with the films because he had all this fancy CGI technology he was trying to push and show how amazing it was. You go back and edit his, his former films. So, yeah, you can have your own Star Wars Despecialized collection, but also have the modern films, how George Lucas wants them to look, and so on. We can just go through our films, you know, manually edit them, put them into collections as we see. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Another thing to be aware of, if we go into Manage Our Libraries, so if we go Films, we've got Manage Recommendations there. So it's got the seasonal movies as halloween comes around plex will look at what scary movies you have and suggest them on your home screen or to your friend's home if you're sharing your server with them as it gets to christmas time same again it will start suggesting christmas movies so we can turn that on or off here i've turned it off because i do my own christmas collections i'll decide what i think is a christmas film not plex and i can enable these or disable them throughout the year as i see fit so now you're aware that options there as well so hopefully that's helped you out guys have a great day have a great evening whatever it is you choose to do after watching this and as always i'll see you when i see you next ciao for now